We have our one point B2 homework. Uh, starts out with 8.52. We're given these five elements, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, fluorine, and neon. And they ask us to put it in increasing, increasing order of ionization energy. So increasing order would be from low to high. You want to think about what it's asking for. You don't want to give it the wrong direction. You don't want to go high to low if it's asking for low to high. So potassium on the far left should be the lowest ionization energy, followed by calcium, which is immediately to its right. And then over on the right, we have phosphorus, which because its electron is in the third level, will have a lower ionization energy than Fluorine, fluorine's electron is in the second level, and fluorine will be less than neon because neon has more nuclear charge than fluorine. So the order will be potassium, calcium, phosphorus, fluorine, and neon. In 8.54, we're asked to explain why, if there is a trend in the third energy level for increasing ionization energy as you go to the right, why is aluminum less than magnesium? Because aluminum's to the right of magnesium, but it's less ionization energy. And that is because uh, aluminum is an exception because it's losing a 3p electron, which has higher energy and more repulsion than a 3s electron, which is the electron that magnesium is losing for its first ionization energy. 8.56. Um, we're asked to uh, say which of these ionization energies, 496 kilojoules per mole and 2080 kilojoules per mole, matches which electron configuration. So 1s2, 2s2, 2b6, 3s1, that would be the 496. 1s2, 2s2, 2b6 would be the 2080 because removing a 3s electron should take less ionization energy and removing a 2p electron. It has nothing to do with this being a, a full sublevel or being a noble gas arrangement, but it's because it's the second energy level compared to the third. Uh, 8.58 asks us to predict the ionization energy for the 80th electron in um, mercury. Uh, so this is the 80th ionization energy of mercury the last electron, taking all 80 electrons away, the 80th one, you've taken away 79, now you're taking away number 80. Uh, the Bohr equation is 2.18 times n minus 18 joules. Z squared, uh, Z when you have um, only one electron left is going to be the 80 protons in the nucleus, 80 squared. And the electron will be removed from n equals 1, the first energy level. The 80th electron has to come from the first energy level, the 1s. So plugging that in, I get 1.3952 times 10 minus 14 joules of energy to remove one of those electrons. Multiply by Avogadro's number, and I get the energy to remove a mole of electrons. Divide by 1,000, and I convert it to kilojoules. So the energy ends up being 8.4 times 10 to the 6, so 8.4 million kilojoules per mole. And then the last one, this is actually a little bit of a preview of the math we'll be doing in the next section, 1C. We'll have to be doing math with wavelengths and frequencies and energies of photons. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually talking about PES. And in PES, H times the frequency, H nu, is the energy of the photon of ultraviolet light that is striking the atom. That photon is going to give ionization energy to the electron, and the electron will also have some leftover kinetic energy, 1 half m mu squared. Now, in this particular problem, they said that they were using 162 nanometer wavelength of ultraviolet light. So the first thing I did was I converted 162 nanometers by dividing by 10 to the 9th of 
converted to meters, 1.62 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Then I divided the speed of light by the wavelength to get the frequency, 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1.62 times 10 to the minus 7 meters is 1.85 times 10 to the minus, or 10 to the positive 15 seconds to the negative 1, or hertz. Frequency is the seconds to the minus 1 per second. So then plugging that back in and multiplying it by Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds, um, and the units are, of seconds are going to cancel out. Seconds to the minus 1 again for seconds. I get 1.23 times 10 to the minus 18 joules is the energy of the ionization, or is the energy of the photon of ultraviolet light, which is equal to the ionization energy plus the number they gave in the problem for the kinetic energy of the electron that's emitted, 5.34 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Subtracting this from both sides, I get the ionization energy to be equal to 6.93 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Uh, once again, multiplying by Avogadro's number and dividing by 1,000, I get 419 kilojoules per mole as the energy per mole for this ionization energy. Now, how do I know that that's the most loosely held electron? Well, the most loosely held electron should take the least amount of ionization energy, which means it should have the most leftover kinetic energy. So the one that takes the least amount of ionization energy will always have the most leftover kinetic energy when it's, uh, when it's removed from the, from the atom. 